amerikanske psykolog Jay Balski, og jeg finder ud af, at han er til konference i Zürich. På vej hjem gør jeg et sidste stykke. I think one of the problems with child development and the study of human development is that we've been excessively influenced by the Enlightenment and we become romantic idealists who believe that humans are perfectible organisms. And if we just loved them, cared for them, nurtured them, stimulated, we'd have peace on earth. Well, if you're an evolutionary biologist, you know that that's nonsense. So an evolutionary biological perspective taught me, don't romanticize development. Understand that organisms have a primary goal in life like all living things, which is to reproduce and pass on their genes. As a developmental psychologist who studies children and families, my interests are how do experiences shape who we are? And the notion is that early experiences shape who we are, whether that's the first five seconds of life, the first five months, or the first five years. And I came to realize that, wait a minute, the future is inherently uncertain. So therefore, why would nature craft an organism whose tomorrow is dictated by how the winds are blowing today? Because if the winds change, then they're all going over the waterfall. It's a dead end. And that said to me that theoretically, what we should have is variation in susceptibility to environmental influences. But now my presumption was that that would be more or less inborn. My close friends are professors Ashlam Kasby and Tammy Moffat. And before their now classic paper on gene-environment interaction came out, I saw the figure. And that figure, that graph they had, showed that with a certain genotype, if you were maltreated, you were more likely to be antisocial. Well, what I noticed right away was, hey, there's a part of this figure that shows that those same supposedly vulnerable people who carry a certain genotype so that they'll be more aggressive and antisocial when they grow up if they're maltreated, that if they weren't maltreated, they were the least aggressive group. What became clear is that under bad conditions, just as those risk theories predicted, those kids with those genotypes looked like they did badly. Right. But if in the few studies that actually had measures of positive environment, or sometimes it was just the absence of a bad environment, you weren't maltreated. Not that your parents were really nice, you just weren't maltreated. Just a normal childhood. That those same kids with those same genes were doing much better than other kids. Babies can have difficult temperaments. They're highly negatively emotional. They're hard to settle. I had one of these. I came away from the experience wondering why there wasn't more child abuse because I wanted to wring these kids' necks so often. This is your own kid? This is my <laughs> oldest son, Daniel. And I, was, I always used to say about Daniel, it's a good thing we got him. Um, because we could cope with him. Well, it was very easy to see how a family, if you were depressed, if you lacked resources and didn't have understanding, if you were overwhelmed by life, this kid would have, you might have thrown him against the wall. Right. You might have called him names. You might have hit him. Okay? Um, but with those parents who have those kids and never told is, this kid's going to try your patience. But you know what? You've got a diamond in the rough here. In the rough here. This kid, you can really make an imprint on him. You can really develop him because he or she has great upside opportunity as well as downside risk. And that really is or can be a blessing, not, if you would, a curse. Hmm. We have another concept, not only risk, but resilience. You and I both grew up in divorced homes. Right. I become a basket case because I have risk characteristics. My genes, my physiology, whatever. Yeah. You... I try them. You, no, you don't try them. You just sort of... It's more of a duck's back. It doesn't matter. Yeah, right. You're who you're going to be almost no matter what. Yeah. Robustness. Right. So it looks like I'm vulnerable. And you're what we would call resilient. You did not succumb. But now, let's put us in another thought experiment where we're poor kids, but... The world changes and we get moved into a program or an environment where things are really lush and rich and there's lots of opportunity. All of a sudden, the risky guy over here flourishes. The resilient person over there stays who, 
conversation she was. So resilience isn't an unmitigated good. It's an unmitigated good when things go badly. Um, but when things go well, you may not be able to benefit. Yeah. Um, and that's nature's way of hedging its bets that if things go badly, people like you are going to do better than people like me. But if things go well, people like me are going to do better than people like you. To me, that is such a, uh, an interesting and positive way of, of thinking about genetics. Because it is sort of leaving the medical model of diseased and well or normal and sick. And, and it's all about biological variation. And there is a good evolutionary reason for biological variation. It tells us that there is no perfect genome. Absolutely. Okay? There is no perfect brain physiology. Absolutely. It depends on what context you're in. Absolutely. I mean, this brings me to myself. I have had, you know, a genetic test. And I was basically told that I have, you know, two copies of the risk allele for everything. Mayo A, serotonin transporter, COMT, uh, BENF. So you should be depressed, antisocial, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I might have turned out a lot worse if I, you know, didn't grow up in a certain environment, for example. The thing is, it gets me thinking about what is it about my upbringing, my childhood, that would have been positive. Because when I think about, you know, early childhood, there was a horrible divorce between my parents who hated each other from I was, you know, 10 years wow. old and they couldn't speak to each other ever again. My mother died when I was 18 um, and my father was an alcoholic. Mm. But then again, uh, I have an extremely close relationship with my father. I mean, I really, really loved him. 